Hello and good morning. Hi, sis. Hi, sis. Good morning, beautiful family. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your Thanks. great comments too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Every day or. Yeah. Yeah. We had fun in the Q and a session. If you haven't seen the recording for that, that was fun. That was great. We got to meet a lot of you and that was wonderful. Loved it. Enjoyed it very much. So thank you. That's it helped me. <laughs> yeah. So if somebody doesn't know about it, how would they, how would they access a recording? Well, let's ask our family, our support members, if we can uh, put the link to the Q&A session down below in the resources. All right, then I need to write this on a... Dickie, no! no. <laughs> yeah. So we need to yeah. on, link it on YouTube. Yes. Okay, so what might happen is you'll need to to um, enroll or register first in mm -hmm. our platform, our academy platform, and then mm -hmm. have access to the recording. I think okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. If you've been walking with us this far along, we'd like to have your contact information. <laughs> We're not soliciting everything we offer is for free, but it would be lovely to keep track of who's who's out there and uh, that's journeying with us. Yeah. And you get our newsletter, I think, that way also. So that would be great. Okay, sis, you've offered so uh, generously to start us out on lesson two fifteen. I have. I have. Yes. Good <laughs> if I could remember that I did, and now I do. Okay, <laughs> I do too. You know, one thing a, a a dear friend of mine used to tell me a lot back in the day was, "Nook, you're so funny." <laughs> it's true real quick after a while yes <laughs> after a while okay so lesson 215 review lesson I am not a body I am free for I am still as God created me and the review lesson that we're going to look at is lesson 195. Love is the way I walk in gratitude. A very powerful lesson. The Holy yes. Spirit is my only guide. He walks with me in love. And I give thanks to him for showing me the way to go. I am not a body. I am free, for I am still as God created me. Feels so like the that. Lesson, sorry, this is love is the way I walk in gratitude, which is one mm. of my favorite lessons. What were you going to say, this? Um, it just, it almost feels like there's that two part process, you know, it's in the surrendering our, our so-called independent will to Holy Spirit. When we allow Holy Spirit to be our guide and walk with us and make our decisions, um, for us, that there is gratitude based on what we're shown. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Thank you for seeing that direct connection there. Sure. Yeah, because we're actually abdicating the I know mind or the mythical me, the ego self, right? Mm -hmm. We're asking him to be our only guy. That's it. Okay. So I've got a couple of notes here that I'd like to go through, if we could. Mm -hmm. Love is all God is. I mean, love is all God is. If we can feel into that. As a consequence, love is all I am. You know, take that in. Love is all I am. And really feel into that. Love is all I am, and I am nothing but love. What does that feel like? So 
so yeah if you can even just open to the feeling it doesn't matter if you can't feel it mm -hmm. just open to receive it because god has already given us the knowledge of this it hasn't gone anywhere our awareness of the love we are mm -hmm. is missing that's all it's just our awareness of it we've blocked our vision temporarily mm -hmm. so it's just offering the willingness to allow him to reveal to us or holy spirit to re reveal to us the direct experience mm -hmm. that love is all i am Right. And from that, of course, comes gratitude. Sure. And therefore, love, if love is all I am, then love is all around us. Mm -hmm. It is all around us. It's in everyone and everything we see, we think we see. Right. Yeah. Um, but the question is, do we recognize it? Because if we're not recognizing all the love that surrounds us in everyone and everything mm -hmm. it means that we're blocking our awareness of the love we are right. but it's through the love we are that we have the vision to see what is really there behind the appearances mm -hmm. of what we think we see right love is that vision yeah mm -hmm. And if we're seeing and reacting to something else other than the love we are, then we're seeing through the ego's yeah, filter. Right. It's not really there, but because we wanted it, mm -hmm. we're still seeing through that. Right. So what came this morning very quickly was some of the attributes of the love we are. We've got three here. Um, sinlessness, guiltlessness equals innocence. Sinlessness, guiltlessness, and equals innocence. Are we feeling our sinlessness? Not a big question. Are we feeling our guiltlessness? Are we feeling our incorruptible? You know, every day are we at least opening to feel the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit? A mission to reveal it to us because, because that, yeah i just want to say because that acknowledging our sinlessness is also acknowledging our fearless what were you going to say Sue? it's not it's not important i was i was struggling to hear because it seems like the volume is slipping on it but you're saying that this this uh sinless the felt state of sinlessness and guiltlessness brings us that state of fearlessness is that what you said okay and so while fear is running we can't know our innocence and the innocence uh, the felt state of our innocence is the undoing of this entire dream of separation because it's all founded on guilt yeah, so again, you're encouraging that felt state because when it's a felt state, that's where change happens. Otherwise, we're just reading words and we might even be able to, to memorize those words, but it's not making any change or one bit of difference unless we really receive the import of those words. Ask Holy Spirit to make it known to go beyond words. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. Because it's that feeling state, the felt state, that anchors it in our awareness. Mm -hmm. it really anchors it. And it opens up as a portal to receive the rest of it. Yes. Right. Got it. Can you hear me? Yeah. It's just like on every maybe fifth or sixth word, it almost feels like it starts to cut out. I don't, I don't understand it. I Maybe everybody else is going to be able to hear you fine. I, um, I think the ego wants to shut me up. No. <laughs> Well, it might, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it does, but it ain't going to happen on my watch, so nope. <laughs> yeah, thanks, sis. So getting back to some more uh, support for this lesson, this review, yeah. Love is the Way I Walk in Gratitude, mm -hmm. um, it just this reminders, yeah? Love is the absence of fear. Absence of fear. So 
the question is where is our focus is it on judgment of somebody else mm -hmm. is it on judge is it is our focus on judgment of something that has happened or mm -hmm. something that is occurring in the body we're judging it right mm -hmm. um right. is it is is the focus on judgment of ourselves right it's all the same it's all the same it's all the same it comes from fear the state of fear that we are colluding with um so just to know that we we can't really or to remember that we can't really um rest in the felt state of our incorruptible innocence while we're blaming anybody right or while we're uh, while we're blaming like ourself mm -hmm. or our body mm -hmm. or somebody else right mm -hmm. so um our incorrupt incorruptible innocence has to be shared with everyone for it to be known within right it's not a personal innocence there is no personal innocence. It's impossible. That's right. We're personally innocent while we're blaming somebody else. Innocence is shared with everyone across the board. Because there's one here. There's yeah. one son. So what is the condition of that son? You can't piecemeal it out, which we've tried to do. But in reality, if you're still holding some unforgiveness in the form of judgment, self or otherwise, another brother, um, that would prevent you from accepting the felt state of your innocence or the absence of fear. Yeah, thank you. So, as we said, some of the attributes of, of love, of the love we are, are innocence, right? Mm -hmm. The next one is peace. Yeah. Uh, a deep and grounded knowing of our safety and security. If we, in every single moment, could get in touch with that deeply grounded sense of safety and security, knowing that <clears throat> all our needs are already met, yeah. they're already met. We don't have to go out independently apart from Holy Spirit to try and uh, get our needs met. Mm -hmm. They're already met. All He's asking us to do is go within to rest in that peace, in that gratitude, and to accept that his will is already done. And, the and, there, oh, sorry, just, and there's a difference between a mind at peace knows its safety and security, not because it is safe against real threats out there. The mind that is feeling the peace of God has no fear within it so there are no projections of attack it's it's that fear has left the mind and the peace comes from a mind that is still that mind is not grinding over illusions it's not protecting itself from fantasies of self-attack the mind that is at peace is just still because it has nothing to do but to receive the will of God and knowing that everything in God's will is already, it, it, it accompanies every impulse. So whatever is given for us to do, it's done effortlessly for us. And what is left for us to do is to be consciously present and enjoy, to walk the way in gratitude, to be thankful that it's that easy and that this is our real self. Yeah, that's a peaceful mind. That is yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and the beautiful, beautiful part of all of that as well is as we lean into Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. fully mm -hmm. for all our needs, all our needs are met and more. And more. Right. And more needs we didn't even know we had I don't think I'd call them needs he brings beauty mm -hmm. brings joy brings completion brings true happiness yeah. and and true true union 
Satisfying relationships and things that don't, um, yeah, that, that are, aren't cheap substitutes for true joy and happiness. Yep, yep. And mm -hmm. we might, um, at the end of this lesson, uh, reveal personally what's been given as well as little gifts, symbols of mm -hmm. his love. Yeah. just want to finish this last part. Yeah, off. yeah, sure. Um, so some of the attributes of the love we ask, we said the innocence, then comes the peace, yeah? And then comes the gratitude from that, right? So mm -hmm. gratitude is the direct effect of forgiveness, forgiveness, but having accepted our guiltlessness, our guiltlessness. And this gratitude is the collective outcome of forgiveness, and it, it equals a felt state of the incorruptible innocence we are. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess the next question is to ask, and I'll, like, this is something I have to ask myself every day, many times a day. Uh, it's so easy to slip into the ego mm. and go down the rabbit hole. Because I do ask myself, am I feeling gratitude in this moment? But, you know, because if I'm not feeling gratitude, mm -hmm. I must be in fear. Right. See, the ego says, if you're not feeling in gratitude, it's okay. At least you're not in fear. Yeah. <laughs> is that if, we're not, if I'm not feeling gratitude, then I'm in a low grade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I'm giving that permission. I don't want to do that. I want to come back to gratitude. Even the low-grade anxiety, mm -hmm. I I want to give that to Holy Spirit. Right. Because they're, that love and fear are total thought systems and they're completely opposite. And so you can't have a little bit of fear and still maintain this perfect love which casts out fear. So you'll know that you are being impelled and lived by a perfect love because there is gratitude. And he says here in lesson 195, gratitude can only be sincere if it is joined to love. So it's not possible to have one without the other and that's, that's how you know. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, sis. Yeah, so, um... So we, Why don't you give them some background about your relationship with home? Okay, yeah. Um, you got the gap diagram there? Uh, somewhere, yeah, sure. 200th time, yeah? Ding! The gap diagram. And there are the idols in the gap. And many of those idols... I was hopelessly um, addicted to in this lifetime. Yes. I was talking about this lifetime, not the other thousands of lifetimes. <laughs> so yes. When I said yes in 1990 to Jesus and the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. I had no idea what was going to become, what was going to be involved in my transfer of trust from fear to love. Mm -hmm. And course what happens as we talked about before is a purification right so that the process and jesus speaks about it uh in the course in the text and he also speaks about it in the manual for teachers in the development of trust in the manual for teachers stages we go through yeah so i went through most of those stages and those things were purified Mm -hmm. so I was able to let go of my attachment to these idols that were the um, replacement for God in my life. Mm -hmm. They were the replacement for the Holy Self, for my Holy Self. So you thought that obtaining those things in the gap would bring you a peace and a love and gratitude, and you really thought that that would be your completion, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, of course... Holy Spirit has, as I've allowed these things to become purified and divinely 
reinterpreted and repurposed by Holy Spirit, um, I've lost nothing. Mm -hmm. this I've sacrificed nothing and I've gained everything. Could I ever go back to any of those idols in the gap that I once believed were my completion? Mm -hmm. Would I go back to grab any of them? Mm -hmm. The answer is absolutely no. So all the ways in which the ego tried to frighten you, right? You can't let go of this. You can't surrender that. If you do, then this will happen, right? Some fear. Not one of those ever manifested. It never came through. Okay. So this is, this is really good, you guys. When we want to repurpose the idols and we want to surrender them to Holy Spirit, ego will always interject. And it will interject with some objection saying, you can't do that. If you do that, then this will happen. Okay, of course it's going to say that. But as you hear that, recognize that in your mind when you're trying to purify and, and get rid of those things that you put in front of God because you're certain that God's going to require your sacrifice, please remember this lesson that sacrifice has never come about and the ego's so-called promises of doom and gloom do not materialize. So you can walk right through that false the mists of egos boasting of like, you're going to be screwed if you try and do this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. Thanks. Yeah. And um, one of those idols I so desperately wanted for 30 odd years um, was a home. Good to have a home. Yeah. Homes are nice. Not much to ask for, is it? No. <laughs> Place to live. I never had one, mm -hmm. so I was the um, I was the gypsy mm -hmm. being moved on, on in my development of trust. I just had to be moved every couple of years mm -hmm. somewhere, else, somewhere else, and of course I was very much a fixed person in the mythical me, and I did not like change, so it ruffled my feathers greatly, yeah. rattled my cage. Mm -hmm have to be moved all these times. I never had a, a real uh, home experience here on this planet. And it was, it was good because I came to the realization a few years ago that, oh, well, I've even given my desire for a home in the dream, the Holy Spirit now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I get one, great. If I don't get one, yeah, okay. yes, see, my attachment had to be purified. Mm -hmm. so, so, so three years ago, guess what happened? Well, I know the story, so it's not fair. I'll let you tell it. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, with Daniel, acquired a beautiful home in one of my favorite places in the dream and that is in New Mexico and uh yeah so we acquired a home we have a home <laughs> nobody's going to take the home away from us mm -hmm. and become a sanctuary mm -hmm. and some as I was speaking earlier uh, about is that Holy Spirit when we come to this point of abdicating our mythical me's will our separate will and giving it to holy spirit he really does repurpose everything he, he does repurpose it, everything and he meets every need we have he knows us so well mm -hmm. he knows some of the things or many of the things that we love in the dream and because he purifies them he uses them as symbols to reflect to us heaven yeah. on earth. Mm -hmm. It's just a reflection. It doesn't mean heaven is on earth, but it is a reflection. And yeah. he, he knows our heart's desire to really join with certain symbols in the dream. He mm -hmm. knows. Mm -hmm. And so when we give up our attachment to those symbols, he brings them to us. Mm -hmm. 
we don't have to go looking for them. Right. And um, so can we share some of the symbols that he's brought? Yeah, so just to recap, for a while you were believing that a, that a home would complete you. Home became an idol in place of God. Not God will complete me, but a home will complete me. That's what had to be seen, admitted to, brought to the light, looked at with Holy Spirit, forgiven. I'm going to seek only my completion and happiness in God. Holy Spirit, help me. Bam, right there, right? So she let go of it. Whether it happens or not, I'm releasing it, giving it over to the one who knows. Now there's free space. Now Holy Spirit can arrange and direct and guide and govern the whole thing harmoniously, bring her to just the right place, just the right way, and has just gently set her and Daniel in this beautiful home in a beautiful neighborhood. And uh, it's, it has turned into quite the sanctuary because of our beloved brother Daniel and his, uh, his amazing touch <laughs> uh, with the spirit moving through him. It's miraculous to see the transformation in this home. But it's amazing because you see the Holy Spirit all over it, being the inspiration and turning it into a place where it's like heaven on earth. It really is. It's lovely. And then these added components that Nook and Daniel weren't specifically thinking of or trying to draw in. There were no idols, but there was a gratitude. And then in that state of gratitude, of just being present in love and gratitude, there's this space for Holy Spirit. You know, once we're grateful for what we have, we make room for more. And we don't know how that's going to show up, but the way that it does now, it's miraculous. So um, I've got some photos that Sis has sent me on my laptop here. I'm going to share my screen and um, just show a couple and have sis talk about it this has been her experience since she moved into this home okay that's so important it's the gratitude that brought all of this thing. yes yes the way i walk in gratitude okay what that means oh messy messy laptop okay here we go um which one you want first here we go how about a Okay. What do you think of that? Isn't that beautiful? Okay. That looks like a painting, sis. It does not look like a picture. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I took it through my bedroom window, just outside my bedroom window. That is a bobcat kitten. How's that? And we have six foot plus walls, adobe walls around this house. This little kitten uh, was born on our roof. What are you doing? Okay. I'm just, I'm just reveling in that picture. I mean, if like I saw a poster or somebody paint that, I would just be in awe of it. <laughs> okay. So let's see. We've got... Uh... Oh, yeah. this is the first photo. This is before I knew we had kittens. I was awoken early in the morning by the sound of scratching on my bedroom door. So I got out of bed and saw this most gorgeous face, a little bobcat kitten scratching on my door. I just burst into tears. Tears of gratitude. <laughs> you remember that, Sid? Yes. What? How did this happen? Okay. Let me see what else we got. Um, oh, here's... He's beautiful. Oh, Anybody seen a real road run, runner before? Yeah. yeah. This one came to visit us last year. Yeah. Now, this is Mama Bobcat, and this little uh, kitten was quite a rogue would escape from the roof, its safety, and it would just uh, run around the backyard by itself. So she came down and decided that's enough. I'm going to take you back to safety. So I got that shot of her there. Isn't that amazing? It really is. Okay, you guys ready for something else that's really amazing? This one blows my mind. Uh, <laughs> 
tell, <laughs> tell them about this one. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, last year, I think it was last year, I was awoken in the morning looking out the same bedroom door to this. Two beautiful white feathers suspended perfectly in the air. There was nothing that I could see that was holding them in the air. And again, I just dropped my knees in huge gratitude because for me, they look like angel wings. Oh, yeah. Sign directly from Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And um, of course, they stayed long enough in that suspended position for me to take the photograph. A few seconds later, they dropped to the ground. You remember that? Yes. I could... oh, they're straight out of a, you know, like a book of paintings of angels. I mean, they're the perfect angel wings. Perfectly positioned, perfect color, perfect formation, you know, just hanging there as a symbol uh, for for Nook. Um, just gorgeous. And that now she's sharing it with us. So I was felt so blessed that morning when she sent me the text and the picture. Unbelievable. Just, but believable. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. And uh, let me see. I think... We have a couple more bird pictures. You want those, sis? Okay. How about this guy? Oh, cool. yeah. Okay. yeah, he's a regular, or she's a regular. Um, she comes every couple of weeks or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. And not only that, but I had the... Um, I had the privilege of visiting them not too long ago and their backyard is filled with trees and vines and flowers and butterflies and bees and birds that are constantly singing and there's a bird bath and there's bird feeders and it's just like you just sit there and it's and you know you go outside of the yard and it's pretty kind of arid, like, you know, northern New Mexico, it's deserty, but you go right back in and there's canopies of vines and trees and shade and uh, it's it's really lovely. And I'm, I find so much gratitude that Nook and Daniel are living in this environment. When we're in holy relationship, it's like when something good happens to one, it's felt across the board there's no like private experience of the good that comes and so i've just you know cried tears of gratitude watching the divine hand through the purchasing of the home and the transformation of the home and watching the gifts that come and yeah and um it's not anything like sis has got and i'm still making my way but i'll i would offer this i was walking the other day home and um, this was found on this on the road right before my feet and we have a lot of feathers out here, but they're usually ravens and um, hawks and turkeys. And <laughs> and there was this one lone white feather, and I just took it as a wink that, you know, everything's okay. Um, I myself deal with this thought of live-in holy relationship or a permanent home where I'm not renting and have to move constantly. And I'm just at that place where it's not in my hands. And I'm comforted by watching the evidence of what happens when you surrender it all that it will be arranged for you. And Thank you. To rest in that. Yes. Yeah. Rest in that. Yes. It's a quiet expectation or anticipation. Yeah. His will and your will are one. Same. Yes. See? Mm hmm Yeah. And, and might I also add that a flashback just occurred then when you were showing the photograph of our backyard, you know, with the feathers. Yes. The wall in the background, the adobe wall. Mm -hmm. um, was when I first went to Israel in 2012, um, one of the places I felt the most at home was in the Garden of Gethsemane, believe it or not. So I remember spending quite a bit of time in the Garden of Gethsemane and sitting, sitting in a particular place right at the at a back corner near the wall they had a wall like that there yes and i was leaning up against this 2000 year plus 2000 plus year old olive tree that jesus could have been sitting under himself 
Yes, I know the tree that you're talking about. <laughs> and I was sitting there and just loving the place that I was at, right there, you know, physically and metaphorically. Mm -hmm. Just loving everything that ever occurred, the truth of whatever occurred, not right, not the pain, but the mm -hmm. truth, the love, the, the love. And I remember sitting there going, I could stay here. I could spend the rest of my life in this garden. Mm -hmm. And then just while we were talking then, sis, and showing the photographs, I saw that the garden that Holy Spirit has helped to bring here now to me is very much like that garden Gethsemane mm -hmm. that I've experienced in, in the world. Beautiful. Thank you. Being reflective. And you guys, this isn't, there's going to be some ego pushback. Like, well, that's all fine for the two of you. Can I just tell you that I've known Nook long enough and she's known me long enough in the dream that I'm emotional. It has not been easy. It has not been a, a path of rose petals. It was angst and tears and self-doubt and joining in enraged you know calling somebody saying help me i think i've lost my freaking mind um wondering where the hell are you god i don't know how this problem's going to be solved i mean it was like anguish okay years of it and just surrendering when you didn't know how you could extricate yourself and i watched her and lord i know i'm familiar with my own path but we want to bolster because you know like I don't know of anybody that's more committed to walking this path, the razor's edge, than Nook and Daniel. And I'm, I'm seeing Nook walk just ahead of me and watching the proof of, like, this is the, the evidence of what we're teaching and talking about. You know, you can really have faith in it when you see it, right? I mean, we don't need to see it to have faith faith and certainty but you know when you practice faith and certainty without seeing it the dream aligns and the gifts come and they're perfect gifts they're gifts that your heart never ordered up but you think by the grace of god i live wow you know thank you love for this unbidden unexpected totally grace-filled you know gift and I'm in awe of it. And I didn't do anything. I wasn't seeking it. But, you know, it's just the, the proof of the love that we're turning to. So, yeah. Anyway, just to get, we're just trying to give you the full spectrum of okay. it is true. Keep going. Don't give up. Thank you for. Oh, thank you. And our hand traveling through this. Yes. Which is the transfer of right. Yeah. This is the proof that we lose nothing. We lose nothing. There is no sacrifice in God. That's the proof. He really does love us. This world doesn't know that love, but he loves us with a perfect love. And when we let go of the blinders and the defenses, that's what that's what awaits us. And it'll happen to the degree that we let go of wanting anything else. Yeah. Thank you, family. Thanks, sis. Beautiful. Thank you. Oh, feeling that. Yeah. All right, we will see you next time. Love is the way I walk in gratitude. Thank you. I was trying to recall. Yes, love is the way I walk in gratitude. Okay, we'll see you next time.